Hey, my name's Andrew, and in this video, I will be comparing the Viltrox EF to M mount adapter versus the Speed Booster to help you decide which one makes more sense for you. So to start the video, I want to talk about why you'd want one of these in the first place. So for example, if you want to use one of the most popular uh, Canon lenses, the Nifty 50, this 50 mil is an EF mount. So using an adapter, one end attaches to the adapter and then the other end of the adapter attaches to the camera. So they're super versatile, give you a lot more options for lenses. And I would definitely recommend to anybody who owns a Canon M mount camera to pick up either the adapter or the speed booster. But which one makes more sense for you? That's what we're gonna dive into. Starting off with the adapter. All it is is a metal ring. One end attaches to the lens, the other end attaches to the camera. And it has an element here so that the lens and the camera can communicate. And it's basically the most basic form of an adapter. It, it's just a metal ring and it does its job really well. Now Canon does make its own version, but it's significantly more expensive. So I definitely recommend going with the Viltrox version because it's gonna do the exact same thing, but for a lot less. Another good thing about the adapter is this can adapt to any of the EF and EFS lenses. So basically you can use the speed booster for something like the Nifty 50 because it's made for full frame cameras. But if I'd want to use say the Sigma 18 to 35 lens, this is made for a crop sensor camera. So if I'd use this lens on the speed booster, you'd have vignetting and I can show an example of that. But basically that means that this lens is not gonna work with the speed booster. Also, if you have an EFS lens, which is made for crop sensor cameras, it's not gonna work on the speed booster. So for example, I have the 24 millimeter pancake lens. It's an EFS lens and it won't even mount to the speed booster. So the adapter is a lot more versatile in the fact that you can use any of the EF and EFS lenses, and it's also going to be a lot cheaper. So those are the pros for the adapter. Now moving on to the speed booster. Now the speed booster is going to be definitely more expensive coming in around $150. With that price tag, you're getting that element of glass, which is going to allow more light into the sensor. Basically imagine a magnifying glass blasting all that light into the sensor which basically is going to allow it to have better low light performances. So if you're going to be either filming video or taking photos at night or in darker situations, the speed booster is going to give you better results. It's also going to warp the image a little bit, not warp it like a fisheye, but it's going to bend that image a little bit before it hits the sensor and it's gonna give it a more full frame look. People pay a lot of money for full frame cameras. They're kind of very popular and they're also very expensive to get that bigger sensor. So you're kind of cheating the system with the speed booster and for only $150, getting that full frame look is kind of a steal. When I was using both of them and, com and comparing them, um, I found that the uh, more full frame look, the speed booster gave me that more kind of natural uh, focal distance. It just felt more natural, but having a wider focal range, it does help with a couple things. One, it's gonna allow the video to be a little bit more smooth. When you have a zoom, a, a super zoomed in lens, any little bit of movement is going to be that much more exaggerated. So if you kind of zoom out a little bit, um, this is going to allow all that exaggerated movement to be just a little bit smoother. And since it's going to give you an extra whole stop of light, um, it's going to give you kind of more of a blurrier background. So if you're looking for that kind of professional portrait blurry background, the speed booster is going to do a better job at that as well. All right, and in other reviews, I've watched other people's reviews and I'd see comments on other people's videos, my own video. Um, this, the speed booster is a little bit more polarizing. People either love it or hate it. And I know um, some people get a little bit more technical with their reviews and explain how the speed booster works. I'm not that way. I just kind of give more real world, average user experience. Some people would say that the glass kind of lowers the quality. Like imagine the lens and the camera are designed to work really well together and then you're adding an extra element of glass. Some people say that that lessens the quality. It doesn't make it as sharp. But from my experience in a real world use, I don't really see a one is sharper, one is better quality. So as far as a comparison, um, I don't really see one is better than the other in that scenario. But I will say, I think they both have their good purposes and I have both of them. Um, I would say if I'm going to say pick up the Nifty 50, 
I would want to put it on the Speed Booster because it feels like a more uh, comfortable focal range and it's going to give me that better low light capabilities and I typically use the Nifty 50 for like portraits. So I think that combo is really good. If you own um, lots of EF lenses or you plan on getting mostly EF lenses, full frame lenses, I would maybe go with the adapter and spend that extra money. And if you want to save money and you want to have more options using the EF and EFS lenses, I'd go with the adapter. And ever since I got the speed booster, I've kept the adapter. I haven't gotten rid of it um, because I have the Sigma 18 to 35 and I have to adapt it to my M mount cameras. So this is my combo here using the adapter with this lens. There are scenarios where I think the adapter is better and I think there are scenarios where the speed booster is better. I will say that I think if I was only going to pick up one of these, you know, I only keep one the rest of my life, I would go with the adapter just because it's a lot cheaper and it has more versatility. There are links in the description if you want to pick one up, it helps my channel out. That is it for this video. If you guys have enjoyed, leave a like and if you have any comments or questions at all, leave them in the comments section below. And if you want to see other budget gear reviews, I do that all the time on this channel. So consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.